Ladies and gentlemen, a warm welcome to viewers joining us live and exclusive on Sky Sports Friday Fight Night at the wonderful boxing arena that is Bethnal Green's York Hall, where tonight we begin with our main event. Please welcome to the ring, Lee Haskins. Fabulous to be back here. Yeah. Plenty of good memories for us. Not so for the talented, unorthodox, and sharp-hitting southpaw Lee Haskins. It had all been going so well for the Bristol youngster, but he was unhinged and dispatched by the classy Commonwealth Bantamweight champion Shafiwa Munyai in this very ring. How has he rebuilt mentally and physically? He has unusual but admirable skills, some fancy in here. And with Haskins, it's so much about confidence, Jim. Yeah, because he was supremely confident. Yeah, this time last year, they were saying he would probably be a better fighter weight than he was a flyweight. Unfortunately, his baptism at the weight was against Shafia Munyai, a gifted fighter, and he suffered a heavy defeat. So, back here again at Bantamweight again, which I still feel is a weight he will be a force at. But as he's back chasing titles too early, he's only fought once in the last year. Whereas the man he faces tonight has uh, a 12 rounder just a couple of months ago. Is he back too soon? But I do feel he will be a better fighter at Bantamweight. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ring your champion, Ian Napa. This is why. This is why. This is why. This is He'll get a good reception. This is why. And deservedly so. This is why. This is why. This is why. This is why. Means so much to him. That Lonsdale belt. After nine. Topsy turvy professional years and several title challenges at different weights. Hackney's popular Ian Dapper Napa. He's travelled the short distance from home to enter as a champion. Finally. It all came good over the summer with that well earned victory over old foe Jason Moon. At 29, he now holds the British belt. Is that enough, Jim, or will that spur him onwards and upwards? Yeah, I think it will spur him there. I think it will inspire him. But it's just amazing. This is what this little man is all about. He took so long to win the title. You would have expected him just to sit back for a few months, enjoy being champ, and just relax and chill out. But here he is with just over a couple of months, defending and making his first event, but probably against the most dangerous opponent in the country for him. This is a tough one for him. Yeah, really good match. Good, honest trade fight expected. Lee Haskins, six years younger, that could be crucial. And have a look at the height and reach advantage. Ian Apper at five foot one, he's so small. Both inside the eight stone six bantamweight limit. It's Napa who has the experience. He's fought at the higher level. Four rounds box, but again, a vital statistic at the bottom of your screen. Nort never knocked out anybody in Napa, and Haskins can bang from those unorthodox angles. It's a fascinating one. Ladies and gentlemen, your officials appointed for this contest by the British Boxing Board of Control. Your steward in charge, Mr. Phil Lundgren. Your timekeeper, Mr. Mick McCann. And the judges at ringside will be Mr. Richie Davis of All Hallows in Kent, Mr. Ian John Lewis of Gillingham, and Mr. Marcus McDonald of Twickenham. When the action begins, the third man in the ring will be Mr. Mark Green of London. And now, ladies and gentlemen, live and exclusive on Sky Sports, Friday Fight Night, Frank Maloney presents in association with Chris Saniger and frankmaloney.com. Your sponsors, tradindex.com, Stan James, Sporting Index, and Red Square, the drink of champions. Also, BBE, Britannia Boxing. Proudly present your main event. 12 three-minute rounds of boxing for the eight stone six pounds bantamweight championship of Great Britain. In 
introducing to you first in the red corner, your challenger, wearing purple shorts with black trim. He fights out of Bristol and weighs in at eight stone five and one quarter pound. Tonight, he enters the ring with a 17 fight record. 16 wins, nine wins by way of knockout, and a single defeat. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Lee Haskell. Across the ring in the blue corner, his opponent tonight wearing black and white trunks. He fights out of the hackney and weighs in at an eight stone, five and one half pounds. Tonight he enters the ring with a 25 record, 14 wins and six defeats. Please welcome the man who goes by the name of Dapper. He is Ian Napa. Give me a good clean fight and obey the instructions at all times. You both got that? Shake hands, gentlemen. Good luck to both These two have been good to watch over the last few years, and the styles could blend rather well in this British eight stone six clash. The terrific but tiny boxer, devoid of the power, but with bags of ability and heart, Ian Napper and the Second flashy, round, fast. Awkward, but at times rather defensively open. Lee Haskins. We've had a great start to the season here on Sky Sports Gym, and we hope for another good one here. Yeah, well, this is a a cracking match. Yeah, that little thing I worry about with, with, with Napa. He won the title, but we're all de delighted in his last performance. I've seen him boxing better than losing fights. I'm just wondering, he's such a hard, tough couple of years just gone by. I wonder, is it possible he's just maybe over the edge that little bit? Okay, and this looks really as though it's going to be another tough one for him. You can only go to the well so often. I'm just worrying, has Ian reaching that stage? He is 30 next March as well. And Haskins, 23. Smiles and shrugs that one off, Ian Napa. Will he be satisfied by just becoming a champion after so many years? Or uh, will that take the pressure off the shoulders and allow him to box with confidence and belief? Well, Napa has developed a, a perfect style for the 12-round distance. He likes to, to set a pace, but it's dangerous against such a solid puncher. And I think already, although Haskins hasn't landed cleanly, I think Napa has already felt the power of these shots in his arms. And so he knows he can't take too many chances here. He's turned orthodox, the southpaw from Bristol, from the West Country. The Bristol boys of Chris Sanagar in the familiar purple trunks. But with a new haircut, bleached blonde for the occasion, Haskins really fancies this. Said he's learned from that defeat to Shafiwa Munyai. And he's knuckled down and got himself into terrific condition. And you can see already how heavy-handed he is. I mean, he's standing square at times, not doing uh, things by the textbook, but you can see the power they can generate. He's smiling through that red gum shield. In his 18th outing, Haskins. He's got the middle of the ring, but he is wild. I think the problem for Napa, I think he's the one who's going to have to alter the style to suit the opponent tonight uh, as opposed to the other way around. And I wonder, is he going to be comfortable with that? He's developed into a cracking little 12-round fighter. But what the way he normally does business, I don't think it's going to work tonight. Of course, he's always used to fighting the taller man, Ian Napa, the country's smallest pro. But he's got to deal with the tricks of Haskins and be careful of the power that has led to nine knockouts in 16 wins. Confident start from Lee Haskins. Brian Lawrence leading the uh, Napa corner. He's been in charge in the, the latest phase 
of the Hackney fighter's career. Didn't win the first, did he, Jim? No, not in my card. They've had three minutes uh, to, to get some punches off. Why did they wait to the bell rings? That's a piece of nonsense. Don't like to see that in boxing. Here's the second. Ian Appers changed his trunks. Last time out, he was in red and black. This time, black and white. Up against Lee Haskins, who's been a very good professional, apart from the one blip against Shafiwa Munyai when he was stopped in six rounds. Nothing else. He's done particularly badly wrong. See, Hask Haskins still has his style. Lunge in. If the punch doesn't land, grab hold of the other guy, so it's going to be difficult. Napa does like to counter, but maybe not be given the chance. He switched hitting more, Lee Haskins, in this challenge already. Yeah, but he's, uh, and he's stepping forward, you know, changing stance in the midst of an attack. He still obviously fancies this disjointed style that he's perfected. You can see how strong he is up close and how he can still generate power, even when he's off balance. He doesn't mind dropping his hands, seeking out the corkscrew uppercut. The defensive work there from Lee Haskins. He said he's not modelled his style on Nassim Hamad, it's just the way he feels comfortable. Judges don't think Haskins' style is suited for the 12-round distance because there's so much energy is wasted in the, the things he does, the way he lunges around. But I think that the difference in strength and power here could be crucial in his favour tonight. Napa hasn't even hinted at making an, an impression on him yet. Just tumbles down. No knockdown. Mark Green, the referee from here in London. It's positive, though, from Haskins, isn't it? Yeah, well, he's standing his ground. And he's stopping... Napa from setting anything up. Napa likes to set a nice little rhythm, likes to roll from the waist get up close, but he's not been allowed to do that. Can't take the chances with the power Haskins has. Yes, he wants to get inside here, Napa. Let the punches flow, get his combinations rolling. Good head movement, slick boxer, but he did have that big gap, that inactivity for three years. And he's being troubled by one or two of these from Haskins, who's enjoying himself in there. And this is soon to come back from a tough 12-rounder. I mean, the time he spends in the gym to get ready for that 12-rounder, then hardly a break. Back in again from this one. I don't blame him for wanting to cash in on the title it took so long to win. But a uh, tough couple of years I've mentioned already. Straight in again just a couple of months after a tough 12-rounder. Is he asking too much of himself at this stage in his career? Certainly not looking the part yet, although this is an awkward opponent he's facing. Better work from Haskins in the first two. No, don't be tired. He's a fourth round. Just keep doing what you're doing. We need a jam and better back to it in the hard fucking jam. Got to shoot the corners. Plenty of experience in that corner. James Cook as well, Marvin Stone. Second out. They look very calm Round and composed three. before the opening bell. And Chris Sanagar on the other side was really firing Lee Haskins up, who's uh, come out with a much brighter start. I think he really fancies he can do this tonight, Haskins. Yeah, I think he feels so much more powerful than Nato when they're up close, the way he pushes them onto the ropes and manhandles them. I mean, the main thing for Napa, he cannot become frustrated and start doing silly things. Because boxing people with Haskins style, that can happen. You're doing the right things, they're not working, so you start doing silly things and you're punished. And I think another thing to add to the equation is that most of us have felt Ian Napa is a natural light flyweight or a flyweight. Here he is holding the British bantamweight title. He won it against Jason Booth. Can he hold on to it, though? Has he got enough physical strength at this weight? I mean, every time we see Napa, you know, he's, he's at the short end of the stick as far as physical advantages and disadvantages goes. So every fight is a hard one. I just worry, as I said uh, in the opening round, have we seen the best of him? Is this particular fight just maybe a little bit too late in his career? 
Yeah, did he have his night against Jason Booth when he exacted revenge in July? Not a classic, I'll be Wigan. And this one a bit messy too. I mean, I'm not a lover of, of the style that Lee Haskins has adopted, the way he punches, then grabs. So there he goes again. Couple of punches, grabbing again. It's effective because he's stopping Nata coming back with anything. But, uh, it'd be nice if he would tidy things up a little bit. Hunting the body, though, as well, Haskins. Trying to slow Napa down, who has to rely on work rate and volume of punches because of the no knockouts on the record. It's amazing he's become a British champion with that statistic. Yeah, full credit to him and, and thoroughly deserved. But uh, as a fear, he's not being allowed to box his normal style, can't find a rhythm. I don't think anybody can really find a, a rhythm against Lee Haskins. And whether you like Haskins' style or don't like it, you have to say it's very effective and very difficult to deal with. That was a good left hand. The Commonwealth Bantamweight champion Shafiwa Munyai certainly found a way to deal with Lee Haskins, took him apart in this ring. But he's classy. Yeah, he's classy. He could match him for power and uh, height and reach and everything else, whereas uh, Napa cannot. Good punch there from Napa, but no effect. Hasn't dented this immense belief, almost arrogant attitude that Lee Haskins has in there. Next week on Friday Fight Night, the return of one of the best-known little men, Jorge Arce, as he takes on Thomas Rojas at Bantamweight. That's 10 o'clock, Sky Sports 1. Always exciting to watch Jorge Arce and good value Second at a different level. Ian Napa, but he's got work to do here if he's going to make a successful first defence of this British Bantamweight crown, prestigious belt. Lee Haskins off to a flyer, but we did notice, Jim, in between rounds that he was breathing Haskins already quite heavily. Chris Sanigar saying, you'll get a second win. That's something to keep an eye on. Yeah, well, as I said earlier, I don't think he has a style suited to 12 rounds. This is, it takes an awful lot out of himself for little return. If he's not blasting people out, then he's going to struggle with the pace. Look, he's putting everything he's got into these punches. And if they're not landing and not getting the result, then it's that they're taking their toll on him. Haskins has only ever been the distance once against Zalili Mbichi in the defence of his Commonwealth flyweight crown, and he went through a hazy patch that night when he switched off. Yeah, he managed the distance that night, but it wasn't really what you would call a competitive fight. He had things pretty much his own way. It wasn't his greatest performance, but he wasn't under any pressure. So it's uh, what a difference against Munyai, who can exert pressure and punish him for his mistakes. This, this is turning messy again, unfortunately. Munyai, of course, had that double victories over Martin Power. Really good operator, the atomic spider from South Africa. Napa just beginning to warm up and get some of these hooks and uppercuts going, much to the delight of his local fans here at York Hall. Well, that's what he needs, a little bit of continuity in his work. He has to get the head moving, get some punches off, give Haskins something to think about. That was the, the best bit of work from him. Haskins missing badly here. Wild Lee Haskins and expending energy. And Napa just tucking up. He's been here before. I mean, Napa, with his experience, he wants to still be around in the second half of this fight. That may be when he can make an impression. With Haskins grabbing again, the referee's going to have to have a word with him, I think. Yep, he's been 12 rounds five times here, Napa. He lasted the distance against the good European champion, Simone Malagiotto. And how about this? Uppercut was a beauty from Ian Napa. See, this is Napa, the style that he has perfected. This is the way he wants to box. A little bit of rhythm in his work. It's the first time he's found it. And without question, this is the best round of the fight so far for him. Ian Napa gets going. 
as Haskins is beginning to struggle with the pace already. I think he might be, Jim. Body shots from Napa. Well, Napa is not a puncher, so he is always in the best of Nick. Good round for Ian Napa. Breathing heavily, Lee Haskins. Is he in danger of punching himself out? OK, yeah, sit me down. Pardon? Sit me down. Sorry? Sit me down. Sit me down, all right, the water. All right? Listen, don't fight his fight. Let's get back to the game plan. All right? Hey, you start mixing it here. You lost that trouble. round. All right? Did you play him to his face? Get the distance. Right. Back to the game plan, get the distance, Nigel Christian getting worried as well there in the corner, and that's why. Well, Napa for the first time found that little bit of rhythm, which makes him so effective, putting punches together, good head movement, not taking the counters, picking the shots next, they're not hurtful punches, seven. but look at the energy again, Lee Haskins right. is extending there. You might have hit seven the nail on the head, Jim, one again. Five. Is Lee Haskins a 12-round fighter? Well, it just winds the punches up so much, he puts so much into what he's doing as he suited over the longer distance. Prasanagar wants him to regain the distance. Good right hand from Ian Napa, who's picking his punches quite perfectly now. He's very accurate, Napper, isn't he? I've been waiting for the referee to have a word with Haskins because he's grabbing hold every time they come close. Picking them nicely now, Napa. Lovely left hand too from Ian Napa, who was a tremendous amateur, had so many skills, was a, an English ABA champion, and fought at quite a high level. See, Haskins is the one forcing things at the moment, so he's making God mistake. Just been clipped, good head movement again from Napa. See, Haskins can't let the punches flow because he winds them up so much and the, the disjointed style he has. Losing his way a little bit, Lee Haskins. Excellent start, but uh, losing his way a bit. Trying to dig in here, Haskins. But Napa's going to make him work. And anything loose. He's going to pop the right hand in. Maybe that uppercut again. Here's the volume from Napa. Well, that was better from Haskins. A pretty even exchange. But he didn't grasp, he didn't hold. He punched it out with Napa. That was good action. Commonwealth flyweight champion Haskins might be big physically, but he's fought at the lighter weight too. Will these body shots, these rib crunches, start to take their toll on the challenger? Well, Haskins is coming forward, but he's not putting an awful lot of thought into what he's doing. He's making lots of mistakes against the cute little counter punch outs. Ian Napa beginning to enjoy himself now. Haskins on top, looks a really impressive fighter. But how long does that last for? Maybe not very. The wily old pro Ian Napa is turning this around. Again, look at the way Haskins is winding those punches up. So much energy used up. Oh, oh beautiful Good right hand from Ian Napa. He might not have stopped anybody, but he has hurt people before, like Martin Power in this very ring. And Haskins on wobbly legs. Well, a very interesting fight for the British bantamweight title. And the accuracy and quality from Ian Napper. And look how many Lee Haskins has thrown and not landed, Jim. That is the big problem that I keep uh, remarking on the amount of punches Seven and movement in which. Round six. First three rounds may have been for Lee Haskins, but back comes Ian Napper. Up against it, he's starting to find answers in his career.
this the round that Lee Haskins was stopped and his only loss to Shafiwa Munyai. And is the impossible going to become possible? Is Napa on course for a stoppage win? You never know. Well, I worry they could Napa go to the well once more. <laughs> it looks like he can. It looks like he's about to dig out another performance. Unless Haskins can get himself back in control. Chris Salagar looked a worried man in the corner. Lee Haskins hasn't thrown his right hand for the first almost minute of this round. Is there a problem there? But according to the stats, Haskins has missed with about 200 punches already. I mean, think of the juice that he's used up doing that. Looks to me, Jim, as though he's fighting one-handed. Yeah, well, as you say, is he, is he looking for the opening for it? Or is there something wrong with it? A huge lunge and miss with the left from Lee Haskins who looks at his corner and there is trouble and I think it is the right hand and that is all that Haskins needs at this stage. Napa applies the pressure. See this is what Ian Napa is so good at. Letting the punches flow, digging in, setting the pace and maintaining it. He's been here before, Haskins hasn't. Solid, stable and mature Ian Napa. Yeah, there's confirmation from the red corner that Lee Haskins has hurt that right hand. It's evident, and Ian Napa. But it may happen now. The stoppage win. Well, you can't. It's far too early in the fight uh, for Haskins to coast. So if this doesn't go on, well, let's face it, we can stand a return here. Because this really is warming up nicely. Well, he's showing heart here, Lee Haskins, to be fighting one-handed. Well, this is so hard for him after the punches wasted in rounds four and five, especially. All he's got to do, Napa, is tuck up and be sensible. Yeah, I mean, it's possible Napa hasn't tumbled to that yet, but I'm sure he's corner half. Oh, he's digging in some lovely shots, Napa. Tough to really feel sorry for Lee Haskins. A massive night, and he's in big trouble. Come on. Do not touch it. All right, then get behind your jab and run. Run and move. You know what I mean? You just could play your arm. A little bit. Well, I, want to get the, I want to get the doctor to look. I want to get the doctor to look. Mark get Green the doctor, yeah. wants the doctor in to have a look yeah, at the arm. Yeah, it's a broken arm. It's a broken arm. No, it's yeah. not. Okay. Well, let's just, just see what's happening. Let's just get the doctor to look. Come in, we're sort of coming well, I think we have to find out, is it a knuckle or is it the arm? If it actually is the arm, then it can be serious. If it's a banged up knuckle, then the fighters are put up with that several times, obviously. So, the doctor will find out. Time out, and in steps the doctor to examine him. Chris Amagar furious, he wants the fight to go on. Mark Green, I don't think he was very happy about the doctors. Round seven. Input, well anyway, the fight goes on, and here's the seventh, and Lee Haskins is fighting with one arm. We've seen that miracle before when the shoulder came out with Danny Williams against Mark Potter. Yep, exactly. I mean, we, we, we have seen it before. Uh, Jesus Chavez boxed uh, Morales for about 10 rounds with one hand, so it's been done before. And as long as Haskins is in the fight, keeping it competitive and not taking punches without reply, then he's entitled to carry on with the job. Drama here. 
in this British title affair. As Ian Napa looks to hold on to the belt in his first defence. Tumbles over there. Napa. Shows how much Haskins wants this, because he could have taken the easy way out, Jim. Yeah, but we were seeing the signs of distress. But we didn't realise it was the problem with the, the hand. Uh, we, we thought maybe he was struggling with the taste. But he's showing some character here, isn't he? I don't think trainer Chris Sanagar wanted to throw in the towel. Well, when Chris Sanagar boxed himself, he was the toughest guy in the game, so that's the, that's the way he would expect his fighters to, to react. Haskins tries to pop out the jab, keep Napper at bay. Robert Smith from the British board has gone over to Lee Haskins' corner just to find out how bad it is. There's a lot of discussions going on at ringside. I mean, I'm talking about the energy that Haskins expends throwing punches, but it's even worse now because he's got to double and treble with the same hand. That uses up twice the amount of energy. You wonder just how long Don't he can dig in here. Work. And Jim Knapp has been so active. He's had all this 12-round experience at the higher level. The fight's in his hands now, totally. Yeah, well, obviously, I mean, what, what a massive advantage having uh, two hands against one, but what a show Lee Haskins is putting up here. I mean, he's not even using the other hand for defence, which is an added problem, even if he can hold it to his chin to block some shots, but he doesn't even seem able to do that. We saw a really, really brave attempt at the British welterweight title last week from Francis Jones. And Lee Haskins here showing the heart of a fighter. Napa chipping away. And Haskins, so tough for him. Hey, what do you want that Hey, we know we've got to pull your arm. Hey, no. pull your arm up like that. Then. No, the other one. The other one? No, no more. No, I'm going in. No, you can't. Listen, you're just getting battered. No, Chris, what's going on? No, we're not doing it anymore. Come on. No more. Says Chris Sanaga. I'm going to the fight with one arm. You want one more? Hey? Leave me. You can, you can't do no more. Chris. The board will be on. You know, like, you just can't win a fight. No more. Haskins wants it, but they're going to put him out, I think. No more, says Chris Sanagar. In your best interest, mate. They're thinking your best interest, son. From a health and safety side, Lee Haskins is pulled out, and Ian Napa gets the stoppage win. Finally, after nine years as a pro, he has a British title and one knockout. From him, this year. I mean, he suffered a lot of bad luck. We don't like to see a young fighter losing like that. But if anybody deserves a little bit of luck, it is obviously Ian Napa. But I tell you, the fight was good enough that when uh, Lee Haskins is back in shape again, we can have a return, because that really was shaping up well. Just what, what a great pity. But Jimmy was absolutely the right thing to do, wasn't it, for Haskins? Definitely. He's only a kid uh, at the start of his career. He has a future ahead of him. There was no way he was going to win this fight with one hand. The right thing has been done, thankfully. Well done to Ian Appa. Bad luck to Lee Haskins. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the seventh round, Haskins' corner have retired him, having sustained a damaged right hand. Your winner and still the bantamweight champion of Great Britain, Ian Dapper Napa. And ladies and gentlemen, please join me in making a, giving a big round of applause for the gallant effort put forward by Bristol's Lee Haskins. Well, Ian Napper uh, celebrating there. We'll be hearing from him surely, but Johnny, disappointing way to end the fight in the end. Oh, surely, yeah. But Lee Haskins, he, he found something out about himself. He, his heart was tested in round six, 
uh, and he, he was sort of feeling sorry for himself. But then came back into the fight and he was re really trying. He was arguing with the corner, he wanted to stick it out. They were, they were arguing in the corner, I think they wanted to override the decision at one stage. That's, that's right, but he's in the best interest in the fight. Most fighters have done it, but he, he was just in a no-win situation there. He seemed to give a lot of energy early on in the fight. That, that's that's through lack of experience, basically. He was putting in all the big punches in in the first three rounds, and then he started to run out of, run out of speed. Well, as far as Ian Napa goes, a successful first defence, and he must be feeling delighted right now. They always say it's the hardest defence, the first one. Well, we'll be uh, speaking to uh, Ian Napper and uh, maybe even uh, Lee Haskins as well. Lots still to come, including uh, title aspirations for three fighters. Craig Watson making a good impression. He's got his sights set on a Commonwealth welterweight title. We'll be seeing him in action a little bit later on. Gary Wolcombe continues his comeback, hoping to mount a uh, British light -like middleweight title challenge. And Jamie McDonnell hoping to line up a British super flyweight showdown with Chris Edwards. Let's uh, hear from Ian Napper right now. He's with Ed. Ian, congratulations. But are you a bit disappointed to get your first ever stoppage victory like that? Whoa, boxing is boxing a business, man. We don't get paid for overtimes and stuff. But like, I'm glad to get that on the record as well. You know what I mean? But like, obviously Lee come out to win. You know, it's not like he just punked out. You know what I mean? He caught me some good shots. You know, but that's boxing for you. And they all respect to the guy. You know what I mean? His hand is it's, it's our boxing goal sometimes. Could it happen to anyone, coming to me. So it's just, that's unfortunate stuff. It's still um, things about boxing. So, you know, like, I'm just happy I've got the victory and I can move on to other things now. Hey, Lee, talk us through the injury. What happened? Do you know what? I don't even remember when, when I did it so much. I think it was when I threw a hook or some shot. I don't know, just out of a lot of pain. And um, obviously, I'm, you know, I'm well disappointed that I couldn't carry on. But, um, you know, I wanted to carry on, but Chris wouldn't let me. But, you know, he's a, he's a lot better p opponent than what people make out as well. He's a good fighter and he does it quite hard as well. Yeah, so. I mean, good fire. Chris, did you have no other option but to stop the fight with Lee boxing one-handed? No, I had no other option. I wanted to pull him out the round before, but Lee, uh, Lee insisted on going on, so we just gave him another round. But, uh, you know, it's just very, very unfortunate, you know, because it was a great little fight at the time. Ian, did you feel you were on the way to victory anyway? Yeah, I felt like, like as, a, as, a lo as long as the rounds go, like, I, I only I start getting warmed up and get more into the fight sort of thing, you get me? So, like, having fought people like... Um, like Melodroy, and he was really a big bantamweight. It's sort of like on the British scene, I feel like I'm a bit their size, same size as them, you know what I mean? And physically, I could sort of like handle the pressure they bring to me as well. Promoter Frank Maloney, will Ian have to box his mandatory Martin Power next? Yeah, that's the fight that we've got lined up next for Ian, and I think that's a good fight for Ian. You know, tonight he proved that he's a worthy champion. He lost the first three rounds and came back really strong, and you know, and I think though the injury did suffer the fight. I would be surprised if Ian hadn't stopped the fight the way he was piling on the pressure. Lee, would you like to come back and fight the winner of that fight? Oh, do you know what? I'm going to have a sit down and think about it, but, um, you know, I'd love to just fight again. This has never, ever happened to me before, do you know? And, and I was, you know, I wanted to really take that belt back to Bristol and defend it in Bristol, you know, with, with, with my home fans and that, you know, I'm just disappointed not to go back and show them the belt. But, um, you know, like, like, like Ian said, what can you do? These things happen in boxing. It's never happened to me before, but it's happened to me now. Unlucky type, well done.